There are a few considerations when it comes to getting the correct dropper post for your bike, but it's not too complicated and it's worth taking the time to make sure you don't buy the wrong one. The first is to get the right diameter post for your bike. Now the easiest way to do this might be just to check out the website of your bike manufacturer or sometimes the actual seat post uh, has it marked on there somewhere so just remove your existing post. Most modern bikes will fit dropper posts, they tend to be the 30.9mm or 31.6 just like my new proof mega here. So I've got a 31.6 post that's going to fit this bike. <laughs> So the next thing to think about is the cable routing. It doesn't matter if it's hydraulic or cable pull actuation, but they're either internal or externally routed, stealth or non-stealth. Again, most modern bikes now come with that internal routing availability. Uh, it's definitely the nicer option in my opinion because you just don't get that big baggy cable on the outside of your bike. Everything's kept nice and neat. Again, this bike is modern, so you can see the hole there where the internal routing pops out that dropper post. Now one of the most important considerations when buying a dropper post is the amount of drop on that post. So this Crank Brothers Highline is available in 100mm, 125mm and 160mm drop. And again, my preference would be for the biggest drop possible that fits on that bike. However, some cross country riders will go for the smaller drops like the 100mm just because they don't want to feel like that seat completely disappears. They keep it up near that good pedaling position most of the time, but can get it just out of the way when they need to. And they are slightly lighter. However, like I say, I'd rather go for the bigger drop post so my seat gets right out of the way. However, the bigger drop posts aren't going to fit all bikes and all riders. So you need to take some measurements and that is the length of the seat post, but also the stack height, because you don't want that to be too large. That would mean that at full extension of your post, your saddle would be in too high a position. Yes, you could drop that saddle slightly into the travel to get back to your normal riding position, but that's not gonna be a great use of that drop post. So this is a really important measurement to get if you want the maximum drop post like I do. So the stack height measurement is from your seat post collar up to your saddle rails. So using your original seat post, setting that maximum height for pedaling, get that distance so I can do it as well. This comes out at 235 millimeters on my bike. Then you need to subtract about 50 millimeters to account for that seat post collar and the bottom of that clamp. In Crank Brothers case, it's only 47 mil. So if I do that, it comes out at 188 millimeters, which means that I can run a dropper post up to that size so I can easily fit a 160 mil drop post into this bike. <laughs> So I've worked out the maximum drop I can have. Obviously you can run less than that if you wanted to. Uh, the next important measurement is gonna be the insertion length. So that's how far that seat post will slam into the frame before it hits any obstruction. On most sort of traditional looking bikes, that's not gonna be much of an issue. You can see on this bike, I've got plenty of seat tube down there. Maybe on some bikes where you've got an interrupted seat tube, maybe that's where the shock sits or something like that, then you're gonna have more of an issue. But to do that, just remove your seat post and drop a tape down inside there until you hit an obstruction or a bend like you can see in my frame. Something else to think about, especially when running the shorter travel posts, is to never bring that seat post out of your bike above that minimum insertion mark because that can damage your frame or the post. So to make sure you don't do that, you also need to measure your saddle height. So this is more of like a roadie measurement and it's coming from the middle of your BB up to the top of the saddle. So I know that my desired stack height is 235 millimeters. So this is the biggest drop post, that 160. So that comes out at about that 17 mark on the post. So I've definitely got plenty of post inside that frame. There's a minimum insertion mark. But it's definitely now worth checking that I can get that insertion into the frame that it's sticking up too high. One other thing to think about is that remote lever that's gonna run your dropper post. So this is easier if you're running a one by bike because you can get that lever underneath the bar on the left hand side. That makes it super usable. So do think about where you're gonna put that lever and the lever that comes with the post that you're gonna buy. So there you go, I've got a 160 mil drop Crank Brothers post fit to my bike now and that is in that stack height that I know I need to make sure my saddle's in the right position. 
So, can't wait to ride it. If you haven't got a dropper post already, I would definitely recommend it. They do make riding technical steep stuff that much easier. And if you wanna see if they're faster, click over here to see a video about that. And for how to use a dropper seat post on the trails, click over here, click on the GMN logo to subscribe. Give us a thumbs up if you like dropper seat posts.